So uh, we are excited for our next two presenters. Excited to hear from you all, see what you guys have been doing. And uh, just like Kathy and Chat said, we are looking forward to a successful, uh, busy school year. Yes, we, we, we want all of those things for all of you. You have the new school year starting uh, in Florida. We're a couple of weeks into the start of the school year. So it's exciting for everyone. So we are looking at our first presenters today, and that's Klingberg Family Centers. And I will turn it over to them. Hi, everyone. Um, I know Amy and Kara were coming a little bit late. So my name's here. <laughs> oh, they're here. I was yeah. say, and they took my I name took... off as a presenter. Yeah, I well, I, about I, that now. I know I changed. I logged on because I couldn't find my meet. I thought I had it on my Zoom thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I just used yours that you sent. Yeah, so you got to change your name because there's two of us now. There's two Kathy's. Okay. Do you want me there to start, we... Kathy? It doesn't matter. Why don't Why don't you get I can start. No worries. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So welcome. <clears throat> now, Teresa, will you be moving the, the slides for me? I can, unless you want to share them, if you've made like any updates. It's up to you. We didn't make any updates? No. I'll have you do it because I don't have the original copy. So I appreciate you. Okay. You give Thank me a you head so nod much. or on to the I'll next. I'll say, okay. um, I'll think of a word. Give me a minute. Next. I'll say next. All right. We have, we're talking about our kinetic at school-based um, really mental health center with Klingberg Family Centers. We have a school-based division where we are in the 11 schools in the New Britain district. Um, we're small but mighty, I always like to say. Um, so we've expanded upon that and we can go to our next slide. Thank you, Teresa. Our mission with our agency is to help build healing relationships that empower children and adults to reach their full potential. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So Klingberg Family Centers provides mental health services, um, like I just quoted, at 11 sites in the Consolidated School District of New Britain. We received funding for expansion in three of these schools. The three of the schools we expanded on were Vance, Jefferson Elementary, and Lincoln Elementary. We have been five years of being in the school districts. Um, myself, as a well, at first as a coordinator, now as a director for the last two years, I want to say. Um, and we provide individual family and group therapy available is also psychiatric services. And then thank you. Amy, you want to jump in on this one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we're asked to talk about the impact of our, our grant funding. And what it was really great for us to be able to do is primarily we were focused on just revenue based funding for all 11 schools. And that and so this opportunity really allowed us to be able to expand the services um, to increase our commitment to each of these schools to be able to service them more days. So that was really exciting. So we were pretty much in the schools about two days a week. Um, this is now allowed for us in these three schools to be there five days a week, which is incredible. The schools were really excited about being able to have a full-time clinician on site. Mm -hmm. So I know it seems like, oh, that's what you did, but it's pretty incredible for us. It's it's huge. So it's going to allow us to service more students. Um, we really believe in quality of care um, for our students too. We try to where we can have, you know, the typical 45 minute appointments versus the 30 minute appointments. We try to keep the caseloads manageable so that our clinicians and the students and the families can really connect and, you know, see some outcomes and positive um, things from being in therapy and being in um, mental health services. Uh, this also included increasing the time that we're allowed to have our uh, APRN or our psychiatrist help with medication management as well. So that was really exciting. So that was huge. That was the biggest part of this expansion that we were really excited about. Um, with that said, it also increased our ability to provide additional marketing materials. You know, being a nonprofit, that's probably the last thing we try to think about because it's money that we don't have. We're always trying to give to our employees. But how do we reach the families, right? You know, so being able to provide good quality Marketing materials was huge on our list for this, and we were really able to do that. And we have some great examples that we're going to share in our resource section um, for you guys of some of the things that we did 
and our kind of first event for our back to school bash pictures of our clinicians and staff there greeting our students with a lot of our new marketing materials, which was really exciting. Um, we were able to provide that in English and Spanish too. Um, so we have those both. Um, New Britain has a high uh, population of Spanish speaking um, families. So this was really great for us to be able to reach them as well. Um, we also purchased electronic equipment, including some new laptops for our three school-based clinicians, which they were very excited about um, so that they can be able to do the work wherever they need to be. Um, these clinicians, um, what also kind of helped is being there five days a week before they would be in rooms that were just available to provide the services, but the schools have now committed to give them, them an office space in those schools because they're there five days a week. So I think this partnership has really improved those relationships with the schools to really see the need and the support for it and being able to have the consistency around it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kathy. We can go to the next slide. Next slide. <clears throat> oh, we would love your input <laughs> if you'd like to give us any. <laughs> um, in, the me in the meantime, too, we could show you some of yeah. the resources. So this is the flyer that we have. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the base ones that we did. As you see, we have it in English and Spanish. Um, we're able to promote all the schools so that we can encourage more um, opportunity for families to take the opportunity to utilize the school-based services. It has our hours of our clinic. So mm -hmm. what's really great about our school-based services is we don't just work the 10 months. Our school-based clinicians work through the summer and the whole year. So mm -hmm. they're able to provide those services through the family, through the span of the summer. Um, and continue to do that work and as well as trying to work with them um, after hours for families that might not be able to meet those needs of those school-based hours. So our hours are a little extended as a result of that as well. You go to the next one. Again, this is just a different one. Other option, yeah. Other option, pictures. Go ahead. Um, and these are clinician introductions. So we did have one that we had before, but we kind of edited it and made it a little bit better and um, really talked about the, the services that we're providing here as well and who they are. This is an example of actually a, a clinician who works with us, Katie. Um, and we really thought it was important that they talked about how they, what they did, stuff that they liked personally, um, you know, talked about guard. She talked about gardening and doing puzzles and things like that. And I think it's a good way to be able to connect with the teachers that we're not just clinician robots that come in. We're, we're real people or people that you can connect with. You can go to the next one. And this is what the other side of that looks like. So it provides what services that we do. We also, in addition to our mental health services as kind of a whole school approach, um, we have been, how we've been working in the mental health services at uh, the school district has been through our Love Wins program. Um, through the Honor Grace Foundation. And so these are some additional supports that the mental health clinicians do provide additionally to their mental health services. And I think, and this is us at the back to school bash. That's one of our clinicians, Amanda. Um, so we were able to purchase also a tabletop display. Mm -hmm. We had giveaway bags with program information. So they had like pencils, I think, and crayons in them, Kathy. Yeah, and great. we also did a magnet. It may be on the next slide. Yep. And so those magnets were the the big giveaway. We also gave out like crayons to the first hundred kids at the um, back to school bash. I mean, we blew out of everything <laughs> except maybe the magnets um, because I don't think I was handing them out as readily, but it was it was a great day. It was a way to connect with the other schools and have the kiddos come and see their familiar therapists and say hi. So that was just another great day. And we had another marketing event um, yesterday in the New Britain area too at a community collaborative that went very well. But so it, it really helped to be able to give a piece of us to bring home to them. So we're really mm -hmm. thankful for the resources we've been able to provide. Yeah. And the t-shirt that you see us, it, it's hard to see in the picture. We we get we got new t-shirts this year that have our M like that circle emblem on the front. And then on the back is what it says right here, the Love Wins Klingberg Family Centers. Um, with our number and or, and the um, website, which was also like, awful, really cool. So and it's cool because our clinicians can wear these to all the events that mm -hmm. the school has as a continued way of reminding them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Are the magnets the purple item on the table? Yes, yes. they are. Okay, uh, okay right. So they're like, yep. Oops. 
Okay, awesome. And I also wanted to know, um, what are your demographics of your providers? I know you mentioned that there's a high Spanish population. Mm -hmm. So we have Spanish, we have some Polish speaking. Um, I would say primarily um, a lot of biracial mixed with um, bilingual, that kind of thing with Spanish speaking is mostly our populations. Um, which people are surprised, and Polish. Polish is actually huge in the community as well. Mm -hmm. Something that we have actually seen more of, of too is uh, a higher Muslim population that is in our community that I think we didn't notice as much until we go to the back to school bashes. Mm -hmm. um, and we noticed though we don't service as many as that population in our community, um, in our clinic and in our services. So that was another community population that we're looking to reach out to as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Here's our contact information. If you have any questions. Oh, and the last question I did have for you all is who did you all use to translate your documents? Um, we use a staff member who does the translation for us. Our office manager, Rosa. She's amazing. And she's <laughs> certified in translation. So yes. we have a couple of employees that are certified to provide translation, not mm -hmm not just people that kind of come off and say they Correct. speak another language. These are people who have been certified. Been certified. Yep. Awesome. We, we use as much in-house as we can. <laughs> uh, if you could, uh, at a later date, can you post the examples of your uh, magnet and the other things that you guys made um, so people can see them a little bit closer? They look absolutely. nice, I just couldn't see them as well. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We could do it for each one. I can have um, Kara help us out with that. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And we'll have some time at the end for questions for both groups. So thank you very much. We are going to turn it over to Intercommunity Healthcare. And I saw Trisha on, so. What? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I am Trisha, Director of Intercommunity um, Healthcare. We have 10 school-based health centers, um, and we're fortunate enough to be awarded um, partial grant funding for seven of our 10 sites for expansion, some marketing um, initiatives, and we'll be discussing that. Jessica Russell, who is also on here, she's our practice manager. Um, so Jess, did you wanna just say hello? Of course. Hi, everyone. Happy to be a part of this. I've been with Intercommunity for about like 15 years now and have also been with School Base since the beginning. So I'm excited to be here and hear obviously everyone else's feedback on our slides, but great ideas and great work everyone is doing overall. So a little bit about Intercommunity. Intercommunity was founded in 1977. Um, and we were providing mental health and addiction recovery services. It started out in a church basement in South Glastonbury where families had gotten together because they um, shared some of, they shared some commonality in that they had family members that were suffering with mental health issues and mental illness and also felt that their they were being stigmatized um, very quickly. Intercommunity grew into behavioral health, the lead local mental health authority in East Hartford. In 2015, Intercommunity became a federally qualified healthcare center lookalike, and we integrated primary care and behavioral health and uh, also addiction recovery services. In 2016, we actually assumed the largest detox and we moved our footprint into Hartford, also and merged with the former ADRC, if any of you know ADRC. Um, in 2017, Intercommunity went into the East Hartford Public Schools and opened up five uh, school-based health centers. By 2018, we were in seven, so we expanded into two other sites in East Hartford and last year, 2022. We operate 10 school-based health centers, nine in the East Hartford Public Schools, and one we've crossed into Manchester Public Schools, and we are at Elling Middle School. 
the impact that we've found in this grant funding is we've a, we've been able to expand into the Manchester Public Schools offering, we'll be offering full-time uh, 40 hours of primary care behavioral health. And we have a bilingual care coordinator and an MA at that site. The funding also supports staff, nine staff members across the sites that we were awarded, six care coordinators, two clinicians for expansion of behavioral health services, and the APRN at Illing Middle School. Um, we also were able to, we were awarded some grant funding for an enhanced marketing and education um, component where we don't have the banners. We just got approval today or I would have had the slide. We had to submit the slides earlier, but we are actually made, we've made banners and we're going to be putting them in all the schools, saying our hours of operation, letting families know as soon as they walk through that lobby that, that their school has a school-based health center and contact information, hours of operation. We worked with the school administrators to make sure that, you know, that was approved. And we also are looking at designing posters with each of the school-based health centers having meet your team and having the pictures of the provider, the care coordinator slash MA and the behavioral health clinician. Um, in addition to that, we've had some innovative practices that have happened at intercommunity. We've coordinated with intercommunity grants and special projects manager. We've done some project management. We've leveraged some relationship, levered, leverage. We've um, leveraged some relationships in the community and looking at addressing the social determinants of health among students and families. We've partnered with Connecticut Food Share and ShopRite to address the high need of food access, linking families to resources in the community. This is our nurse practitioner at Illing Middle School. She's a bilingual nurse practitioner. Um, what some of the guidance that we have at Intercommunity just being in the schools for where we've completed six years going into seven is maintaining and increasing visibility in the community. We think it's super important to attend community events, really connect with community stakeholders. We are on many committees, subcommittees at the local level, at the state level, we are represented. Um, also attending any district wide events are super important. This morning, for example, I spoke at the freshman orientation at the high school in East Hartford, just spoke at East Hartford Middle School. We then traveled to another school, Sunset Middle School, and we were there for the open house. So being super visible, I feel like it's super important. We feel like that, that's that been a lot of great feedback. Also close working relationships with school administrators, teachers, custodians. You know, the more people you know in the district, the more that there will be this cohesiveness and it will benefit the students and families. Um, we love to connect with our IT teams, integrating both our agency IT team and the district's IT team is super helpful. We found that they are our best friends, IT and custodians. Also, um, you know, staffing to demand. We, I know that there's been a staffing shortage and all of us have felt it. Um, we have been super creative on how we've looked at hiring and also, um, Staffing to meet the needs of the community is super important. We've expanded services in some of our sites to um, meet the demand of behavioral health services. We're excited about some of our programs. Woodland, one of our newer, newer schools, will have expanded behavioral health services there. We're super excited about that. Um, know your legislators. It's super important that you know who's in the districts that you're in and where you're um, providing the services. So that's super important to develop a rapport, advocacy for school-based health centers in general, um, seeing how you can intersect and embed with existing structures are super important. Budgeting, forecasting, looking at your budgets are super important. Um, and then we've done some fishbone diagrams where we've really looked at where we where our outcomes are how we're going to get there and creating some of those things so that we can make sure that we stay on track for our school-based health centers. 
great. Well, and then for resources, I didn't know how because every district's different, but overall, Connecticut Food Chair has always been a great partner for us. Um, and Casback, I'm on the board of directors. Some of us are on the board of directors as well. Um, we have an upcoming conference in November, and Casback really is a wonderful resource. We are super excited about partnering with different agencies and school-based health centers. We'd love to have people apply for the board positions. Um, you know, so constantly looking at if there are opportunities that way. And then looking at, we have a, pan a food pantry in one of our public schools. And so looking at ways you can partner with food share, maybe getting a food pantry in some of your schools if spacing allows that. Um, we do turkey drives. So those are some of the things that we've done to part where, partner with our community stakeholders. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I know in the chat we had um, for a previous uh, presentation to share about the vendor. I was going to ask the same thing of you all for who um, printed your signs. And if you don't mind posting to Basecamp so you can share your signs and how those all came sure. out. We just had them done. I'm super excited. We <laughs> um, we just, I couldn't get it on the slide, but I'll definitely do that. Or if Joss, if, if you know, there's an opportunity to share it in the chat. If not, we'll do it on um, base camp. Base camp. I want to yeah. say boot camp, but I feel <laughs> like I'm in boot camp right now. <laughs> I'm going will... back to school physicals, as most of you probably are. And it is just overwhelming the amount of families that need either a physical, a sports physical, immunizations. Crazy. Uh, I would defer to Kara, who is our our executive director of development. So she's the um she's the person that I would kind of defer. She helped to put all these amazing projects for Klingberg together, and she's pretty awesome. So Kara, I defer to you with all that kind of stuff because she's got the creative genes there. We we give her an idea, and then she looks at us and goes, "All right," <laughs> and then she puts it all together. So she did an amazing job. Us. Well, thank you to everyone. I want to give a few minutes if anyone has any questions or clarifying areas that you had for our first or our two presentations today. All right. And if you think of anything later, uh, you know how to find them. They've given their information. We'll be posting this presentation as well. And then they'll be posting some things in Basecamp. Or if you think of anything, you can put it in the chat as well. So quick, I have ahead. a question. Um, we can share the banners. If you can give Jessica Russell, mm -hmm. um, you know, have give her request to share, then she could just pull them up so you can see them real time. Sure, let's do it. All right, Jessica, if you ask me, then I will say, okay. All right, hold on. Actually. Yeah, and all participants can share, so you should be okay. It says you cannot start screen share while other participant is sharing. Okay, try one more time. Okay. I've taken off my share. Okay. So this is, can everybody see? Yes. So these banners are six feet by three feet. They'll be in the lobbies of the schools. There is an option, they are indoor, outdoor. Um, so we could put them on the outside of the building if we get permission. Most of the principals have asked to do it right in the lobby. Um, but like you see, it's the name of the school, um, Intercommunity Healthcare. This is our school-based health center logo that we've created. And um, then we ask if the child's enrolled, there's our number to our care coordinator, and then the hours of operation. So it's a great way to have families come into a school and ask the question or even students be like, what does that mean? You know? How large are these and what material was it printed on? So they're six feet by three feet. And I believe it's a heavy duty, um, I want to say like a plastic 
I believe it's vinyl. Vinyl? Yep. Perfect. You look nice and bright, colorful. Yes. Yeah. This is just one. I mean, we have them for, these are all of the sites, but this is just a standard of what they look like. It's nice. It packs the child's enrolled, has hours, day. So they have a way to get in contact and very clear. So great. All right. All right. Thank you. No problem. All right. Great. So if you think of any other questions you may have, please, uh, you can put it in the chat, send an um, email, put it on Basecamp afterwards. A lot of great information they shared with us today. So thank you.